Assalamu alaikum and thanks for watching Hot Conflict. Well, I'm continuing today with our series on alternative careers and positions for Muslims to help change and integrate society here. One of the areas that is needed for Muslims to get involved and be more vocal and active on a professional level is expert witnesses. Expert witnesses specifically in the fields related to Islam, terrorism, and homegrown terror. As we know that Muslims all across the country are being accused of crimes or being picked up for having ties to organizations or possible fundamental, fundamental ideology that is going to lead to threats to the United States. And Muslims are being charged with all kinds of ridiculous crimes and there is a clear lack of expert witnesses for the courts to use. Now, what is an expert witness? An expert witness is someone who possesses knowledge or skills or training or education or in some way has an experience or experience beyond that of the ordinary person to help the jury or the trier of fact in the case, whether it be a judge, a jury, or an arbitrator, to reach a proper conclusion to make a correct decision. Now, when it comes to issues related to Islam and terrorism and ideology or intent crimes, it is necessary for there to be Muslims or people who are highly qualified in Islam to be able to explain to juries and trier of facts what the reasonings and motivations and intents are when we're dealing with issues related to Islam. Now, I say this because there is a lack of Muslim involvement and we see people being picked up all over the place for crimes that are ridiculous. Specifically, just here in Houston, we had a young man who was picked up for possession of a weapon and intent to aid the Taliban. Now, because of his visa status, he was not allowed to legally possess a firearm or a rifle, but the charges were with intent to aid the Taliban, and that's there to influence the jury into thinking that this person is a threat to them. Now, there's no way for it to be possible for someone to have a weapon in the United States and use that weapon to aid the Taliban in Afghanistan. As you can see, that doesn't make any sense, but the charges themselves and the heated environment that we're in sometimes causes many people, juries included, to overreact to the situation. Now, who are some well-known terrorism experts or witnesses that the government calls? As I talked about earlier in a other related blog about experts and terrorism analysts, one of the most well-known terrorism analysts that is being called for legal cases right now is Evan Coleman. Evan Coleman of the Global Terror Alert Network, and he has been called on many cases. One of the first cases he shows on his own website is the case of Sabri Benkala in 2004, I believe, when he was accused. Sabri Benkala was one of the young men accused of being involved in jihad and terrorism because a group of Muslims had gone in Virginia and went to go paintballing. And with the heightened state of alert back in those days, anybody who was paintballing was deemed to be a threat. If you were paintballing, you were considered a jihadi and therefore a threat to society. Now, strangely enough, Sabri Ben Kala was found not guilty in that case and didn't get convicted. Later on, another case that Evan Coleman was involved was U.S. v. Ali Tamimi. Now, Ali Tamimi was a person who was related to Sheikh Omar Abdurrahman, and after 9-11, he was found guilty and has been sentenced to a life term in prison. I mention that only because I happen to know Ali Tamimi and had spoken to him on numerous occasions before he was jailed and had even sat with him and talked to him here in Houston and listened to him speak. Later on, more recently in 2007, Sabri Ben Kala, the Virginia PayPal gentleman, was indicted again on charges of perjury because the government did not want to let him go. And Evan Coleman was called to testify on that case again. I mention that only because prior to Evan Coleman being called, Gordon Cromberg, the district attorney in Virginia, had called me personally to appear 
as an expert on that case, and I had done work with him on some other issues. And at the last minute, they ended up not calling me because there are people like Evan Coleman available to say what must be said to ensure a conviction from the prosecutor's point of view. Now, I say that not to impress you, but to impress upon you the need or the necessity for Muslims to professionally get involved in fields where they can be more useful, to be able to express correct opinions and unbiased views about Islam and ideology. Right now, Jose Padilla, the so-called dirty bombers case is going on in Miami, and the prosecutors there have called Dr. Rohan Gunaratna as the expert witness. He is the person that recently wrote a book called Inside Al-Qaeda. He founded or is involved with the International Center for Political Violence and Terrorism out of Singapore. Now, prior to 9-11, he had done some work in dealing with the Tamil Tigers, and then after 9-11 became a mega expert, a mega witness for national security issues relating to the Al-Qaeda network. Now, there are many so-called people, other other uh, experts in the field have accused Dr. Uh, Gunaratna of being an opportunist, uh, you know, an opportunist being at the right place at the right time, and because of the masses of amounts of terrorism cases that are going on right now all over the country, there is a lack of expert witnesses. And because of this lack, people like Dr. Rohan are being called. Recently, in the Padilla case, one of the co-defendants, a doctor named Wael Giussi, who in the 90s published a magazine or articles under the Islamic Report or the Islam Report. Now, when questioned on the stand about this, Dr. Rohan said, this is a case of jihadism. He is, Dr. Wael is, promoting propaganda. It's a cell activity of Al-Qaeda and extremists. And so we're seeing clearly that even free speech in the United States is being tempered by these so-called experts so that no one is even allowed to speak. I myself, I'm even worried as I, as I record this video, am I going to be the next one taken in? Is merely publishing a report enough to be deemed propaganda? If I speak out, am I deemed to be an Al-Qaeda propagandist puppet just because I express my views? Now, many others have accused Dr. Rohan of being in cahoots and in bed with various organizations and entities that want to secure prosecutions in various fields because of their financial interest and other business interest, whether they're in the Middle East or in other countries. And so we're seeing in our legal system, so-called experts manipulate information that will allow Muslims to be convicted, fairly or unfairly. And with the heightened state of tension and fear in this country, it is hard for the trier of facts, whether it's a jury or an arbitrator or even a judge, to be able to weed through the so-called expert testimony. And the reason why I say this is that it therefore becomes necessary for Muslims who have professional skills and qualifications, who are educated in theology, Islamic theology, and involved in the Muslim community, to step forward and appear as experts in fields or issues related to Islam and terror, so that Muslims aren't brushed aside in one sweeping movement where there's no one to appear in a court of law to give expert testimony on Islam. Again, we're dealing with two specific so-called experts who are considered leaders in their field who are not qualified to talk about Islam. Dr. Rohan is not a Muslim. Evan Coleman has a, a Juris Doctorate, a JD, but only a mere certificate degree, a weekend so-called program that allows you to claim some kind of knowledge of Islam. Without a proper understanding of the theology of Muslims, how is it possible that the courts are accepting these so-called witnesses as experts? Are we trying to condemn the leaders in the field right now? No, that's not my point. My point is 
to elucidate the fact that there is a clear need for Muslim experts to step forward. So, continuing our series, this is a lucrative field for Muslims to take into account. Many times experts are paid two, three, four hundred dollars an hour for their testimony, in addition to expenses, in addition to public speaking appearances. Being an expert witness is a lucrative field and something that Muslims who are familiar and have the background and have traveled and have done work with various organizations can look to as an alternative career to help the Muslim society better integrate. 